So, uh, so my name's Jade, and I uh, work. I'm a consultant with Columinate, um, and I've been volunteering with my local co-op for about 18 years. I've served on the board for 14 years. I just finished, and I was board president for three. And I've been working with Columinate with boards of directors now for about five years. Um, Pat. Great. Thank you. I am Patricia Cumby, and I am a marketing and communications specialist, and I have been a member of Columinate since 2013, and I've worked in the food sector for a number of decades, and I'm very glad to be here today. And we have a little bit of our presentation that we'd like to share with you now about Columinate. Shall we show the video? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for uh, your participation today and for watching our little video. I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce Columinate to you if you're not familiar with our cooperative. We are a cooperative of consultants and there are about 40 of us living in different parts of the country. And the work that we do is we offer support for cooperatives and nonprofit organizations in the areas of governance, management, operations, and finance. So thank you again for being here today. Cool. So uh, we'd like to tell you a little bit about the Everyone Welcome Project. So Everyone Welcome was a booklet that Pat and I worked on together to a couple of years ago or a few years ago now, I guess, we were really concerned about why the co-op sector, the food co-op sector was so white. And uh, we wanted to do something about that and felt maybe the best way to start would be to ask folks a lot of whom were still living that had founded our current generation of co-ops and ask them about their experiences about race and food co-ops. So we asked them what they'd learned about race growing up and how their race experiences had impacted um, their experiences in the co-op. So we've got narratives of 15 folks in there, including us. And uh, it's a great, we think, conversation starter uh, for talking about race. Want to add anything, Pat? I think one of the things that was also one of the propelling um, motivations for working on this project and doing this book is that so many of us involved in it really had a strong belief that it's through telling personal stories that we gain greater understanding, empathy, and our move to action when we, um, you know, can see things through other lenses. And we thought that would be a great opportunity for us in our sector to start the conversation about race around this particular format. Thanks, Pat. Yeah. So we want to thank, we wanted to touch base a little bit about how talk with, so doing this project involved us talking with other people about race. And actually that's what we were asking people to do, to talk about race, about their race experiences. So um, we're going to spend a minute or so just telling you how talking about race has changed our lives. Uh, so Pat, you want to start? Yeah, thanks. Well, I have to say that this project and this book and the opportunity to talk about race was nothing short of life changing for me. I think, uh, you know, part of that was 
the ability to um, have these deep dive conversations with people in ways that I hadn't before. And I have to say that it wasn't necessarily easy in the moment. And at least at the beginning, I had lots of anxiety about, you know, was I doing the right thing? Uh, how would people feel about it, etc. And I think the most life changing thing for me is the understanding and realization that racism's impact on me as a white person has been to keep a complicit silence around mm. what's happening to uh, fellow human beings. And uh, breaking the silence has been a big part of this conversation for me, especially as a white person. Thank you, Pat. I just want to welcome another end attendee who just joined us, Lisa. Welcome, Lisa. Um, we'll be, um, we're right now just spending a minute or so talking about how talking about race has changed our lives. And uh, for me, uh, Jade, I have had a number of conversations about race over the course of my life, not really very deep ones as a young person. Race really impacted me a lot growing up in a culture uh, that is more white people are uh, white supremacy culture. Um, so there were conversations I had mostly with family members. And as I got older and tried to talk about race with white people, it really usually didn't go very far. Uh, there was a lot of uh, silence and not lack of interaction. So I learned to stop talking about race. But by doing this project and really being open to listening to people and about their race experiences was really transformational for me too. I realized, I thought I kind of knew the story, like, oh, I understand, you know, what, what's going on with racism. And I found that I really didn't, uh, that it's really more complex and everyone's having a different experience and different opinions about it. So it's really not just opened my eyes and ears. It's actually helped me have a more um, nuanced perspective and more understanding of people and why they might think differently about race conversations. So... We're going to actually invite our attendees to talk a little bit about race now. Um, and we have a question for you. Um, and how fearful are you talking about race with someone of your own race? And how fearful are you talking about race with someone of a different race? And um, let me see. And if it helps Anybody? to start the conversation on a scale of one to 10, you could say how right. one being one being not at all um, comfortable with it or fearful to 10 uh, feeling confident. So do, do any of our attendees want to comment about this? Mm hmm. Well, I can start by saying uh, when I started working on the Everyone Welcome Project and um, talking with uh, people from different racial backgrounds than my own, I have to say that I found talking with people of my own race about race was definitely more difficult. And I think part of that is, you know, um, at least in my upbringing, it wasn't necessarily I was uh, taught how to do skillfully. And it was also something that, you know, I was personally encouraged to ignore. And in different situations, it's considered taboo. So I found it much more difficult uh, to talk about race with someone of my own race, uh, white people, I still do. Um, and if I had to put it on a continuum, I think it just depends uh, day to day in terms of that fearful fear factor, if you will. Um, 
but I find that, you know, usually uh, talking with white people is more challenges me more. Okay, thanks, Pat. I'll leap in uh, talking about race with some of my own race, where one is not afraid of all and 10 is pretty terrified. I'd say about really with any person of color, I'm close to a one in level of fear. And um, that's been that way most of my life, I think. Uh, with white people, I would say when I started this Adventure, I was close to, and I was probably a nine in the fear level talking to white people about race. And now I would put myself uh, about the same, um, close to the same as I feel talking with people of my own race. I think practice has made it easier. So uh, do any attendees, we've, we've allowed you to talk if you want to share. <laughs> I'd like to share it all um, on the webinar, uh, Lisa. Yeah, thank you. Um... So how fearful am I about talking about race with someone of my own race? I'm white. Um, I guess that it would really depend um, because I think there are plenty of white people for whom it's not really safe to talk about race. Um, but people in, the, in my general circle um, mm -hmm. and maybe even one circle out, um, I'd say, yeah, maybe an eight. Um, and then how fearful am I about talking about race with someone of a different race? I would say the same thing applies. You know, we, in my, I'm lucky enough in my own family to have a multiracial family. Um, so talking about, I mean, I feel very comfortable talking with my, extended family members about race and even joking about race with them and they joke about race with me um and uh, and lots of lots in between um but talking about race in general i'd say maybe a three um unless there's a context like the one that you're creating right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And does the context make it easier or harder? I, I think it makes it easier, uh, partly because I feel like this context is the, the um, pre-understanding is permission granted to speak about race. It's, it's understood that that's something we can do together. And I don't have to explore that, you know, is it okay to talk about race because you've created a context in which it is. Aww. <laughs> so, um, so thanks. I did want to move on though, uh, Pat. Just move to the next thing. Yeah, I just appreciate your comments so much, Lisa. I think uh, context is really a big part of it and it's actually uh, one of our questions. <laughs> so you delightfully preempted that. <laughs> right. Yeah, thank you. And then I was thinking inside, it's like, wow, Lisa, you're really lucky. Um, yeah. And uh, because if you have the opportunity to talk about this really uh, situation that's facing our country in a lot of ways right now, and there's a lot of change and a lot of fear happening around it. Um, if Brittany or Carolee don't have a burning share, we'll move on next, because we also have another question. Um, oops, that did not mean to happen. Uh, do you think conversations about race um, can help us achieve, that's what supposed to say, can help us achieve our core principles. They does say that, yay. So um, would anyone like to share about this? I think we all could talk. Actually, I should probably call on someone. Oh, someone else is joining. Um, Carolee? It, my internet connection is really unstable, which is why I went away and came back. Uh, so if, if I leave at any time suddenly, it's because I got booted off the internet. I think that if our cooperative principles mean anything, uh, especially the first, uh, the one about everyone, you know, being a, open to everyone regardless, um, 
you know, be like our open membership principle and the others too, but that one in particular, if they, if it means anything, yes, we do have to talk about race. We have to talk about why we've had, we have had segregated co-ops, maybe not deliberately, though some of them probably are, were, yes, in our history, yes, we've had segregated co-ops and so on, but even our sort of, uh, what's the word I want? We've had co segregated co-ops that weren't planned to be that way, but that still happened. And so we have to talk about it if we're going to ever achieve that first principle. Mm -hmm. So moving right along, well, I guess I we should have, say... Um, one thing yeah. to add uh, regarding yeah. this particular question, just to let people know that um, in addition to the Everyone Welcome resource, we also have a resource that can help guide conversations like this around... Um, co-op principles and it is uh it's on our website uh co-op principles and values uh looking at them through an equity lens and we can share that and, with uh, our participants yeah i was going to say we'll have our emails at the end of this presentation it's also on the website and you could just say to one of us hey we want to look at that resource That's we're talking great. about uh co-op thank you <laughs> Looking at COP principles through the lens of equity. So what's our next slide? Shall I be surprised? Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The one that Lisa preempted. I <laughs> 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 would encourage you to talk more about race. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we'd love to hear from anyone who wants to share about this. And you don't have to share. Um, I can share it, be. Brittany. Yeah. Hi. Um, hey. Well, of course, all of these ideas uh, would <laughs> encourage more conversation. Um, I think for me personally, what has sort of opened up the conversation for me is a lot of reading. Um, mm. For those of you that know LaDonna, she had sort of given, um, sort of shared with me a recommended reading list and really just taking the time to go that deep um into topics and content I think has given me so much more comfort and I think that for me was like the real turning point was just the depth that I experienced from reading yeah mm -hmm. well that's great thank you for giving that feedback uh, anyone else want to share about this no well I love what Brittany said I think Reading especially is a great place to start. And uh, that's, you know, another reason why uh, we created the Everyone Welcome resource was to give people an opportunity to do that in a very uh, food co-op sector specific way. And although you don't have to be in the food co-op sector to think exactly. about how uh, different races um, histories would impact someone's experience. What I think is really compelling about Everyone Welcome um, resource is that regardless of people's race, every single person had a different experience, mm -hmm. a different racial experience. And that was kind of like, wow, you know, we know we're all unique, but just realizing that there is no like one, this is one type that's all racial experience. We all have a racial story. That was kind of cool. And you can see that in that resource. So, yeah, and I would, I would add one thing too, which is um, in this age of coronavirus, you know, for so long, I thought, oh, it's so important to have these conversations in person. And of course, I still believe that. But I have also been for myself and my own education participating in online conversations a lot like this chat in our and they have just mm -hmm. been really great. So I think uh, I can drop that barrier of having everything has to be in person or something. <laughs> yeah, thanks, uh, Pat. And I guess I want to underscore again that just having more facility talking about race, period, has made me more comfortable in the world in general. Mm. It just feels like 
I don't have to be afraid of certain conversations coming up, maybe still about like, there's a couple political conversations that are still a little touchy, <laughs> but, uh, but generally this just makes it easier to you know you could talk to anyone and, and feel like you would have something to say. Mm. Mm. We have, so we had a couple slides, just really, we don't need to spend a lot of time on them. I think uh, some guidelines that seem like for some of you would already be pretty familiar with or pretty much common sense of how to talk about race and guidelines. Yeah, we, we put together some guidelines to, you know, help people think about uh, how do I how do I do this? How do I start a conversation? What does it take? So, uh, on the one hand, it requires uh, empathy, and on the other, accountability. So, what we encourage people to think about in having these conversations is that it's it's not a debate. It's not a right and wrong situation, you're racist, you know, things like that. What we want to do is ask questions, be an active listener, and to the best of our ability, be kind and generous, assume positive intent, and do our best to not be judgmental. And in that way, we enable our own empathy and compassion for the person that we're talking about. So I hope that when we have these conversations that we're responding with our hearts, not harm. And then on uh, the next slide, uh, unless you wanted to say something, Jade. Um, okay. There's the accountability piece. You know, um, we have to explain and accept that there may not be closure, definitely in terms of just having one conversation. And it's certainly an ongoing process to become more skilled at doing this work for ourselves and in community with others. So I think it's important to, you know, admit if you've made a mistake, it's also important to bring yourself by speaking your truth and I think it's also important to create a safe space to the best of your ability. And I think, you know, when Lisa brought up context, I think part of that context is to um, allow for conversations uh, to unfold in the ways that allow people to do what we're asking them to, which is speak their truth, but also to listen. And then lastly, to commit to conversations that help us come together and act together rather than divide us. So ultimately, we are working to create connections and not enhance conflict or division. Thank you, Pat. And I just wanted to touch base on... Um the microaggressions thing, uh, some of you might have heard about microaggressions. They're just common daily verbal or behavioral things that happen that can um, be triggers for people and upset them when talking about touchy subjects like that. And what I want to say is it's likely when you talk about race that you might say something or someone you're talking to might say something that would uh, cause a reaction in you and just um, being prepared that that's kind of a normal situation when we're trying to change uh, something that we've all been enculturated in that does um, oppress people and to just, you know, expect it and um, be willing to quickly, I think, apologize or accept responsibility if you just, you know, didn't know that something was going to bug somebody. And I want to, but there's also, there's a lot of resources to learn about this, but I think having the conversations I mean, open it, it's great. And then um, to finish up, <laughs> I just want to say, uh, so we do have this Everyone Welcome. It's a free online resource that you can download and read people's race stories, including mine and Pat's. And we're also available uh, to do, we've done, we've spoken together at a couple of co-op annual meetings. We've gone, uh, we've done workshops at different conferences. We went to uh, one co-op and did a all day with their staff, um, which was, I thought was really, really fabulous. Um, so we're there to help 
And if anybody wants it, you have to contact us. Pat, do you have anything before our last slide? I would just like to thank everyone who came today and uh, participated. I think that your willingness to be here and show up and have these conversations is so incredibly important to our movement.